thank you for your <clears throat> nice words of introduction all of you can hear me i hope so yeah and uh, yeah. others may kindly mute their uh, mics dr p p chandrajudan national president isas dr v r nair chairman webinar committee dr p b joseph the program coordinator dr s suresh kumar today's chief guest professor c g ramanjan nair who is my teacher i hope he is somewhere here i saw him scientists technologists colleagues friends ladies and gentlemen it's my great pleasure and privilege to deliver a talk to such an august audience and i thank the organizers of isas dr joseph in particular for this wonderful opportunity the inaugural lecture of this series was on analytical science in space research delivered by the renowned nuclear scientist dr ap jeraman who dwelt on modern analytical techniques used to explore deep space and distant planets like mars by nasa isa and russia therefore i thought it will be very appropriate and interesting to you to know this how these instruments are safely taken to mars or any other planet it's a great challenge i want to question you that the lecture has nothing to do with any analytical chemistry but on what isro has achieved i can i have the sharing of the slides okay 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 sir is it full screen eh? no make it yeah now it's full screen okay sir okay indian mars orbiter mission which happened 2013 14 time frame 8 years ago what isro has achieved is something about which every indian can be feel proud of something which no other country in the world has accomplished in its maiden achievement that's why i call it as a unique scientific achievement now let us see why i classify it as a unique scientific achievement because the overall success rate of mars mission whether it is flyby orbiter or lander or rover i suppose i don't have to explain to you what what these are is less than 50% because of the high technological challenges involved in it if you look at the history of the first attempt to mars the situation becomes more clear see all the space faring nations including veterans like ussr all of them have failed without exception in their first attempt to mars except india so india is the only country in the world to succeed in the very first attempt and the only asian country to reach the martian orbit i suppose you can give a big clap it is not audible but i believe you are giving a clap okay so today my uh, the content of my talk will be answering to three questions why how and what why india went to mars how our spacecraft mangalyan meaning mars craft mangal for mars and yan for vehicle mangalyan went to mars and what are the lessons we learned from india's mars orbiter mission for a wider context especially for the youngsters and students and also a couple of slides on the history behind the whole thing so why mars explorations 
the global interest on mars has been there from time immemorial romans named it god of war and chowa dosham by people of kerala i suppose you follow what i what i mean by that but then with the advent of telescopes better understanding came about mars still there were a lot of speculations like when you see this type of you know crevices people postulated that these are rivers and canals when i was a young boy i remember to have every day some news item telling that they have seen some somebody moving around mars there is a civilization on mars etc but today we have a better understanding of the mars ever since the space exploration or the mars missions have started well coming to the special features of mars i will not go into all features but are pertinent to the mars mission this shows the satellite image of mars and earth mars has diameter half of that of earth and a mass about 10% of the earth one year is 687 days and one day is almost close to our our uh, earth day but the challenges are that it, its average temperature is minus 63 degrees centigrade as against plus 14 for the earth and the atmospheric pressure of the mars is 4.5 mm mercury even recent analysis has shown carried out by nasa curiosity rover october 12 at uh, 2012 has shown that 90 95% of uh, the martian atmosphere is carbon dioxide but the actual challenge for the mission to mars is none of this because this can be handled is the enormous distance and the speed this shows the this part shows the average distance of the orbit from sun there is a difference of close to 80 million kilometers on the average of the two orbits and the speed is this much so going from earth to mars is something like jumping from an airplane moving at a speed of 1 lakh kilometer per hour to another one moving at five 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 and the engineer hello can you please mute your mic uh, to another one at 86000 kilometers per hour at a distance of almost 80 million kilometers so now coming to the features of mars which has which are linked to this project one is water on mars mars is very dry there is no liquid water on its surface however there is 26 million cubic kilometers of ice with solid carbon dioxide on the polar region like this white color what you see the hypothesis is that 3 billion years ago mars had a denser atmosphere and higher surface temperature and liquid wa- water on the surface which was a hospitable environment for microbial life but the more clinching evidence or conclusive evidence of a life from mars would be methane gas in mars why because 90% of methane on earth is produced by microbes so methane can therefore indicate the presence of microbial life on mars some missions of nasa and esa shows parts per billion ranges of methane in martian atmosphere however there is no concordant result so far so this exploration is still continuing so the question is is methane present or in mars as an evidence of life on mars well the second therefore uh, the current global interest in mars are one to confirm the presence of methane or life on mars this may hold the key of a key for evolution of life on earth because it is postulated that it is some part, it is, these things have a commonality to establish location amount and nature of water present on mars 
to explore rare minerals because our last lecture by Dr. Ratish said that all the minerals on earth will be vanishing in another 25 to 50 years of time. Important minerals will be man vanishing in 25 to 30 to 40 years from now. And the last word, uh, not the least, is Mars are our future habitat for, or intermediate station for going to further distant planets, which is a very long-term perspective. Why? Because the greatest scientists of this century advocates settlement of human beings elsewhere because of the disasters like this. I suppose you can read all these things. Stephen Hawkins, way back in 2006, postulated the requirement of going to various planets, which is what is happening now. I mean, what will happen now? I should not say it is happening now. But for, for going to Mars, we have to, what you call, terraform Mars. See, this is the Mars structure now. We have to convert it into something like this for a uh, living. So the original proposal was to uh, use cyanobacterial action, which will take centuries. But then there is, uh, you know, a SpaceX company of the US, its CEO has got better ideas. He proposed a new blast over the poles to vaporize uh, you know, the liberating water vapor and carbon dioxide, which are greenhouse gases, to warm up the planet for a comfortable living and liquid uh, water for there, and oxygen by cracking water and carbon dioxide. So he 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 has in fact they have the SpaceX company has planned a huge settlement on Mars like this. What you see here is the settlement by. 2050, for which they are already building, it's a very serious plan, already building a 100 passenger payload a spaceship called Starship and a more massive rocket called Super Heavy. The combined mass is 5,400 tons and the height is 120 meters, the height of a 40 story building. And the maiden flight is planned in 2020. 2022, in another two years from now, and a manned flight in 2024. But then in this context, I want to show you the picture of uh, a, one of our beautiful Kerala girls who was actually duped by a company, uh, which is, uh, I, don't, I don't say it's, it was duped, they were broke. Because a Holland company, Mars One in 2011 was established with a promise to have permanent human settlement on Mars. But then Holland does not have even a small sounding rocket. But they did, a, they were planning on our modern, uh, you know, what you call the market economy to buy everything and then including the loans. So to 2015, they advertised for volunteers and shortlisted, uh, uh, you know, 100 people, which included this girl. So there is a saying in Malayalam, Ana Gurutalam Asha Gurukiru. So this is a situation like that. The company is no more there. So our objective for the Mars mission is not for settling in Mars, which may do later on, but the present objective was to develop technologies required for a maiden interplanetary mission. And then there were scientific objective along with that which includes exploration of Mars surface and Martian atmosphere using indigenous scientific instruments. So the ma major elements for the mission are four. That is choice of a suitable launch vehicle from the available ones. So that's why it is given in green. Design and realization of a Mars, of the Mars uh, orbiter, which is new for us. Design of the trajectory to the Mars, which is new and deep space communication and navigation, which is partially new because we had experience in our Chandrayaan missions. So ISRO has launch vehicles available for uh, launching satellites for what you call sun synchronous polar orbit, 800 kilometers above the Earth, and for the geostationary 
orbit, which is 36,000 kilometers above the Earth. In launching the geostationary satellites, actually the launch vehicle puts it in what is called a geostationary transfer orbit like this, and then firing the liquid apogee motor, they are taken to the geostationary orbit by the satellite propulsion. Why I told these things is that these are involved in our Mars mission as well. So this shows you a comprehensive picture of all ISRO's launch vehicles. Two smaller ones, even though they are small, they are as heavy as 50 tons. SLV-3 and ASLV, which are the experimental launch vehicles of the 80s, they have the payload capability of only about 50 to 100 kilogram in low Earth orbit. Whereas the PSLV, which is the third one, which is highly reliable and cost-effective operational satellite launch vehicle. It has a record of 41 successful launches and 237 foreign satellites from 28 countries, including USA, Britain, France, all those, uh, Japan, all these countries have launched, come to us and launch their satellites using this vehicle. It's very versatile. It is used both for sun-synchronous polar orbit with 1.8 tons and geostationary transfer orbit with about 1.4 ton missions. Well, we had what is called GSLV, this one having much higher payload capability of 2.5 ton at that time. However, we didn't choose it because at that time we had eight flights out of which three were unsuccessful at the time of the choice, but today the situation has changed and it has also become a very reliable vehicle. Today, if we were to go to Mars, we would be using GSLV Mark III, India's most powerful rocket to, to date. Its Mars is 630 tons and a payload capacity of four ton in GTO and 10 ton in low Earth orbit. Its first successful flight was here and it was not available at the time of the choice. Okay, we have selected the launch vehicle. Next is design and realization of the Mars orbiter Mangalyan. It was done by URO Space Center, that is at Bangalore. The, the spacecraft is made with autonomous features because of the enormous distance to Mars, because up to 24 minutes are taken for two-way communication. And by then, if something, uh, some mishap occurs, we cannot control it from Earth. So it's an autonomous vehicle. This is its picture and its total mass is 1,340 kilogram, which is within the payload capability of PSLV. And the propellant mass is 850 kilograms. The propellant used in this rocket are, the oxidizer is what is called MON3 and the fuel is monomethyl hydrazine. This was developed in our entity and then at BSC. Mondri is a mixture of 97% nitric oxide and 3%, sorry, N2O4 and 3% nitric oxide. N2O4 is prepared by the catalytic oxidation of ammonia, the technology we uh, developed and it is produced in industry. Nitric oxide is prepared by the reaction of sodium nitrate with nitric acid. I know that chemists will, will be happy only with a couple of equations. That is why I have intentionally brought this slide into my presentation. Usually it is not there. And, and we have established a plant also in the beautiful terrain of Mahendragiti near Nagargo. Monomethyl hydrazine is prepared by the reaction of excess methylamine with chloramine in presence of alkali. Technology was uh, demonstrated, uh, I mean, uh, developed and transferred to industry for production. This is our MMH plant at Tanuku. There are two liquid engines in Mangalyan, which are developed by our liquid propulsion center for the purpose. They are used in our satellites, routinely in our satellites. The main thruster is a 440 Newton liquid apogee motor, which you have seen for raising the orbit. And there are eight numbers of small thrusters used in attitude, orbit control, and uh, uh, other maneuvering. This is a main thruster. 
and this A2MR for steering your satellite and Mangalian. There are five measuring instruments on board Mangalian to measure the surface mor morphology and Martian atmosphere. All were indigenously developed, and the total mass of the all of the all five instruments put together is only 14 kilograms. One is a methane sensor, a infrared radiometer, and Lehman alpha photometer to measure the H2D2 ratio to find out the study of how water was lost from Mars. This is for the first one is for measuring methane. And then we have a quadruple mass spectrometer for measuring abundance of neutral constants in upper atmosphere developed by the Space Physics Laboratory of VSSC. A thermal infrared imaging spectrometer for surface combustion and mineralogy of Mars by our Space Application Center at Ahmedabad. And of course, an invariable part of all this type of mission is the color camera. Okay, we have the launch vehicle, we have the spacecraft. Now we have to go. So there are three major st stages of going to the Mars. First one is to leave the sphere of influence of the Earth, which was done by using PSLV and the spacecraft propulsion, for which we have the Chandrayaan experience. Then getting in, injected into a predetermined orbit around the sun and cruising to Mars, for which we didn't have any earlier experience. Entry to the Mars orbit, we have a limited experience for lunar orbit insertion. So on November 5, 2013, Mangalyan was launched by PSLV into a 250 by 23,500 kilometer elliptical orbit around the Earth. This use, I am just giving a comparison, this use for this operation, 2,60,000 kilograms of the launch vehicle propellant was used. Thereafter, we had six orbit racing maneuvers and injection towards Mars by the spacecraft propulsion for which only 447 kilogram of the spacecraft propellant was used. Why? Because in the first phase of this orbit itself, we have gone, we have gone beyond the Earth's gravity pool. So I am just showing you a cartoon or a video of how it has gone, how it has performed. Okay. With this last operation, we are entering into the Martian orbit. Okay, you please have look at this very carefully because this trajectory was designed based on thousands of simulations and very precise calculations because none of this is susceptible for any experimentation. This is the, th this is the one which was around the Earth so at this point, which was on November 30, the velocity of the spacecraft was increased tangentially like this. So that is called Hochman transfer. To take it into an elliptical orbit around the sun. This is sun, this is sun, this is Earth at the time of the launch, and this is Mars at the time of the launch. So it was injected into an orbit round the sun. This is a Mangalyan orbit. Going around that needs no energy because it is like a satellite around the sun. That is the crux of doing it at minimum energy. But then the travel from the point two to three where it met Mars, involved a travel of 667 million kilometers and it needed 300 days to travel from here to here. At this point, Mars was here, but when our Mangalyan came here, Mars will be moving to this point. So the calculation, our assumptions, everything has to be very precise. Then only it will be coming to 
this point. So, uh, you know, with, but then the calculation, the calculations and the performance of the propulsion was so precise that only two minor orbital corrections were needed, which involved only 0.8 kilogram of propellant utilization in 300 days. Then Mars also arrives at the same point at the same time. And then, then on, on, September, on September 24, the spacecraft was to be slowed down for the Mars gravity to capture it into its predetermined orbit. If you don't slow it down, it will go again in its orbit. So that is what happened on, on that day. So this, I'm just trying to show it in a dark room. This was captured there very precisely. So entry to the Mars orbit, on reaching the sphere of influence of Mars, the velocity of Mangalyan is to be reduced from its sun orbital velocity of 22.1 km per second to precisely 1.1 km per second to get it captured into a predetermined Martian orbit. The important question at this junction is that, will the engine work? Because the engine was uh, on hibernation for almost 300 days in deep space environment because of its complex geometry with lots of valves and all whatnot. So the answer came from ground simulations and a compatibility test. And most important thing was on T minus two day, we had a four, four seconds firing of the engine, which gave exactly expected results and great confidence in the mission. So the major events on September 24 was early morning, the spacecraft was turned 180 degrees and then fired to reduce its velocity from 22 to 2.1. The, thrust were, uh, the thrusters were fired for 24 minutes and 18 seconds using 248 kilogram of the propellant. And the velocity, look at this data. What a fantastic data. The velocity was reduced to 1.099 kilometer per second as against the requirement of 2.00 kilometer per second within 0.1% of the target. A near perfect performance of the propulsion system which is a record for any maiden flight by any country in the world. The spacecraft was then turned back to the normal position and exactly at 8 a.m. we got the confirmation of the orbit from Canberra where it was sighted first. A very it was a very close to the predicted orbit and I should call it as a perfect mission because this is what we predicted, 823 by 80,000 kilometers before the mission started, and this is what we realized. I want to again say that this is a rare feat by any country in the world in its maiden attempt. And only uh, we have more than 50 kg of the propellant left over for more than one year of life of the satellite. So the, this is the first picture of the Ma Mars taken by Mangalyan, presented to our prime minister by the chief of ISRO. So India has now become the first country in the world to reach Mars orbit in the very first attempt and the only country in Asia to reach the Mars orbit. And we joined the elite group of three spacefaring nations of USA, Russia and Europe. There are some other features. This is the most cost-effective cost Mars mission ever done on Earth because our cost was 450 crores, making it the least expensive Mars mission to this date. This is our cost. This is the European, this is American, this is Japanese, and this is the Chinese. Not only that, it was realized in a record time of 15 months. The normal time slot for doing such a mission is 36 months. This was possible because we had our reliable PSLV off the shelf and also the entire ISRO work for this goal. This is at another important point is that it is, beyond, it is performing beyond the mission objective of six months in orbit. The mission objective was only six months. 
but on 24th September 2019, Mangalayan completed five years in orbit and has enough propellant to complete another year. This is a, a standing testimony for its performance because this is the picture taken by Mangalayan of the Mars moon on July 1, 2020, and it was released to the public. So it's a glorious example of QUIC, innovative and low cost way of doing major tasks by India. But then this was a New York Times cartoon which appeared immediately after this, uh, you know, this mission. Indian going with a cow, knocking at the door of the elite space club. There was an uproar in all over India on this cartoon. But to me personally, this was, according to me, it was a very good cartoon. Why I say it was a very good cartoon? Because it tells you that in spite of being backward, we have achieved. We don't have to be elite by caste, creed, or color to do great things. That is what it means. ISRO itself is a, is a glorious example of this. We had a very humble beginning in 1963. We didn't have even a lab. Our laboratory was a church building. And the parsonage was the place where hazardous operations were conducted. We were the late entrance, all other space-faring nations ended early, earlier, and ours was a totally a civilian program, whereas all other space-faring nations had the military support for their program. In spite of this, today we are top in utilizing space technology for societal applications. The Indian National Space System, which is a mature space system comprising of our own satellites, remote sensing, communication, navigation, and scientific satellites, our uh, satellites, our launch vehicles, our own launch facility, our own tracking facility. We are one among the five nations in the world having these capabilities. Providing nationwide services in communication, weather monitoring, disaster management, education, health, ma management of natural resources, etc., etc. I don't have the time to go into all the details, but I will give you two examples as a typical case. For example, the telemedicine center from Amrathan Namai Institute of Medical Center at Kochi, a doctor sitting here can do the diagnosis of a patient in remote uh, Jammu and Kashmir or in Assam or in Andaman and Nicobar. We have 22 similar telemedicine stations. And then we have a program that is called forecasting potential fishing zone. That is from the color of the sea and also the sea surface temperature. Ever since we introduced that program, there is a 50,000 crore worth of additional catch of the fish because of this program. Well, there are many things like that, but there is nothing comparable to saving your life. Just to give an example, in 1970, number 12, there was a Bola cyclone where five lakh deaths were reported in India and Bangladesh because there was no satellite facility for forecasting this type of cyclone. But a same or even a higher intensity cyclone called Fanny cyclone hit our cost on 2019 May 2, the death was only 89. This was due to six, uh, 68, sorry, due to the timely warning and evacuation of uh, the people based on pinpoint accuracy of the cyclone prediction. Well, friends, ladies and gentlemen, this is the realization of the vision of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai. This is Dr. Vikram Sarabhai who, like a prophet in 1967, he declared in Geneva that we must be second to none in application of advanced technologies to the real problems of man and society. Well, it was a prophetic statement because today, India is second to none in application of space technology to the problems of man and society. 
well this is one of my uh, prized possession this picture because it was taken when he came dr saravai came to inaugurate the instrumental analysis lab in 1971 i was given the task of building up the lab at that time by 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 my boss who is here dr wasant goarikar dr sarabhai who who's birthday 101st birthday was day for yesterday 12th of august i pay a big salute to the great visionary leader of indian space program so he was he became as you know director of physical research prl in at the age of 18 sorry sorry at the age of 28 and therefore he was always happy to get associated with youngsters i was 24 at that time so both of us are in good smile and i was of course a handsome boy at that time i hope you agree with a lot of hair on my head well dr goarigar and dr goarigar we started the rnd research and development of propellants and chemical systems for indian space program in a very small asbestos building and this was our laboratory at that time in a corridor but from there we are from there what we are today because sarabai vision became a reality through the vitality the hard work with passion and perseverance not deterred by failures of those who follow values of and the values of isro about which i will tell you in the next slide professor sadish savan followed him and he succeeded dr sarabai he materialized sarabai's vision and built isro isro into a world class organization he channelized efforts of the indar isro community towards realizing a common goal to meet the national needs he involved indian industries and academia to realize the goals but despite these best efforts we had failures one of the most disappointing failure in the history of india's not of india's scientific world was the failure of our first land, uh, launch vehicle slv3 in 1971 this was professor dhawan going with uh, uh, doctor he was not doctor at that time mr kalam who was the project director for this slv3 uh, being taken to the launch station unfortunately it was a failure but then he gave us the confidence to overcome the failure he told us we have stumbled but not fallen free he gave the people the credit of success you would have read it in wings of fire uh, to prime minister he he was uh, dr kalam was presenting and he was in the background whereas when the presentation was to be made to the press after the failure it was professor dhawan who was in the front and kalam was in the back that is what we we call by isro culture isro searches for what caused the failure and not who caused the failure the community owns the failure and finds the solution we have very strong failure analysis teams and i myself was chairing one such team for almost 10 years so that is what transformed this gentleman to this gentleman the first citizen of the country otherwise he would have been a disappointed all through his life he has told this particular court i don't have to read it to you well not only i myself stand testimony to the conducive atmosphere of freedom encouragement and faith in indian youth see i mean let me take a minute to explain this old picture there was a failure of the static test of the first stage of slv3 sometime in 1976 or 77 the nozzle failed the project was in very forefront of realization so the general consensus in the review committee was to take it to france for the thermophysical property evaluation then i stood up from the audience of 100 raised my hand and professor dawan who is here as yes what do you want i said sir there is no need of sending it abroad give me 3 weeks i will do it 
we have done it in our laboratory i should say successfully and professor thawan along with dr goerikar examining that particular results what we have done ever since that we never had a failure of the composite nozzle so the vision vitality and value have become the hallmark of isro in all areas of our work for example this is dr goerikar explaining to prime minister indira gandhi a proposal to set up a huge pilot plant while we were struggling to make a tiny rocket like this you know this was our status in 1960 this is a tiny rocket the same operation now being carried out on this this is a 200 ton solid motor the third largest in the world so this is at another great pioneer in the work mr mr kuru who was handling on liquid propellants i was fortunate to work with him subsequently with him this is how we used to hand over the liquid propellant to ur rao who was a satellite project director oh somebody is trying his or her uh, skill of uh, you know drawing i don't know in my this thing is it is please refrain from doing so okay but today we are in this position yeah a state of our plan for producing this not only that we had a technology denial for the cryogenic technology from russians under the pressure of uh, the americans and at that time we took it up in isro as a great challenge and 40 special chemicals and polymers were indigenized in our group for the cryogenic program so i would conclude 45 minutes which has been allotted to me the lessons learned from its uh, isro's successful mission my dear friends if you have a dream of for life if you have the confidence to achieve it if you have the passion and perseverance to realize your dream with hard work and if you are not defeated by setbacks and if you learn from failures and improve upon if you hold values in your life you will succeed in your endeavor vision vitality and values are the three v's to ensure the view of victory in your life my dear friends so yes we can from our experience yes i say yes we can and i say yes we did now at this age looking back for the 50 odd years i say yes we did why why i say yes we did this was the scenario when we started abdul kalam along with one of his colleagues there was no laboratory no laboratory chair no table so starting on the earth assembling the payload being carried on a bicycle to the launch tower this was the size of our rocket 7 kilo 6 kilograms in february 1969 when the man landed on moon but today this is the size of our rocket a increase in rocketry by 100 thousand times not only that in performance these two s200 motors the s200 solid motor produce 500 kN thrust which is the thrust of 22 giant the state of the art boeing jet engines the biggest ever boeing jet, jet engines firing together yes friends so let me wish you all of you to say yes we can in your life and at my age to say yes we did in in my late time thank you very much for your nice hearing